on today's episode. Here we can see the classic IMAX B6AC charger. This must be one of the most popular chargers of all time. You can use it in the field. It has a, a, a DC input jack there. It only supports 11 to 18 volts. That's for use off of a car, car battery. These days, many people want to take their quads in a, in a backpack. I have my little uh, Hubsome quad here and the new Zeno with its folding arms and of course the DJI variants. The ability to take these in a backpack and to take them on holiday is uh, obviously very tempting, but lugging this around um, is going to be a bit of a pain. So enter the new B6 Lite, tiny but mighty, it says. As a comparison, let's just check the weight of this guy. I think it probably is uh, outside the range of this little device. Yes, I think it's a little over 650 grams uh, against the new light, which we can see there at 135.6 or 136 grams. So that's nothing in comparison. Important sticker on the front here, never use the charger unsupervised. Do take this type of notification seriously. I do have other videos where I've shown some of the consequences of what can happen to LiPos and you really don't want that to happen when there's nobody around to, uh, to deal with it. In the box, you have a cable, with two XT60 type connectors, and that's designed to connect this device to a power supply, uh, SkyRC's own power supply in this instance. I'm not going to be using that. The included manual is very basic, but as it says, you just scan the code here and then you can download the full version, which I urge you to do. It's very comprehensive and provides a lot of information. Strongly suggest that anybody starting out in the hobby who, or who is unfamiliar with these types of batteries uh, takes serious note of this and uh, has a good old read of that. There's the connection there to uh, the SkyRC power supply or indeed to an external uh, sealed lead acid battery. Let's remove our warning sticker and there is another protective cover under that so we'll remove that as well revealing a uh, very nice display there. Probably a good idea to keep the original soft foam bag to, to carry it in, stop that screen getting scratched. What do we have? Uh, we have an input XT60 connector on, on this side here, and obviously the output XT60 here, and the connections for the balance cable, the identifications molded into the case there. So uh, we start with the balance lead number one at this end up to number six. The buttons are touch sensitive so we don't have to worry about any grit or, or dirt getting in to, to stop those from, from working. And there is an integral fan. To do the first test I'm just going to use this uh, 1500 milliampere hour three cell pack. display is uh, nice and clear and there's just a single page with all the information that you need on there. Let's try and charge this 1300 two cell pack. We'll plug in the balance lead first. Now as I mentioned the buttons are touch sensitive so this takes a little moment to get used to. But just a quick press and then you can select your different types of cell. So clearly it's a LiPo. Enter. Two cells. We have the options here. Balance charge, charge, discharge, storage charge and fast charge. So we'll make that uh, just the 1C, so 1.3 amps. 
and then it's a long press to start. As we can see, this, this particular battery is almost completely charged anyway, 99% there. And we can see the voltage and the charge that it's put in. The current, obviously, at this point of the charge curve is going to be decreasing. And there we can see the charge complete after just a few minutes, and as expected, 8.4 volts. I mentioned at the beginning that you'd probably be using this in the, in the field to charge batteries for your mini quads or for your whoops and things, so fairly small cells. But don't be fooled, um, it does say tiny but mighty on the box. Just a reminder here that the input voltage can be from 7 to 32 volts and the output up to a 6S cell and up to 13 amps, so that's 220 watts, which is quite incredible for something of, uh, of this size. Don't be fooled into thinking just because of its small size it can't cope with larger batteries than these. If you happen to have uh, some somewhat larger packs, like this 4S 5200, uh, you can still charge those. Now the next test I'm going to do is for illustration only. I wouldn't recommend this in any way, shape or form, uh, to be common sense, it's just to illustrate the functioning of this device. So here is a 2S pack, so that's the lowest voltage that we can power this unit with. And yes, we'll try and charge this monster. Clearly it's a LiPo. It's four cells. We will make it just a standard charge and we won't give this little battery a, a, too much of a hard time. We'll just leave it at one amp. So there we can clearly see that it is charging and the voltage of the battery there 14.94. As I say, this is for illustration only. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. It's just to prove that the input voltage uh, can be much less than the output voltage. Another thing that you'll probably want to do is to make up um, a set of different leads so that you can charge batteries with uh, different connectors like these JSTs. What I've chosen to do is say, uh, this is a, a purchased lead which has uh, pretty much everything that we would need, including just uh, crocodile clips, uh, the JSTs and, uh, and everything else. So as always, uh, links down in the description to these things. To be able to connect this cabling loom to the charger, what I've made up here is uh, an XT60 to four millimeter banana type sockets. So we can plug in our bunch of connectors to that. And this lead also serves a, a dual purpose. If we want to be able to connect to a car battery or a sealed lead acid battery, then this serves that purpose as well, as we can use it on the opposite side. So with that connected in there, we can then connect ourselves to a, a sealed lead acid cell. As a final test, I'd just like to check the balance function. I've got this little 850 two cell pack here. Now it's not terribly out of balance, but 7.6, 3.82, and 7.9. Let's see if we can balance it. So we'll put our balance leads in here, connected our JST connector there, now we have to change the number of cells down to two cells. We'll leave it at, at one amp balance. And once again, we'll come back uh, when that's done its job. The balance charge has completed now, so let's recheck the individual cell voltage. Um, 
looks like it should be fine as it's 8.4 volts for the for the pack 8.34 4.17 so it's done an excellent job of the balance charge as well I'm really impressed with this unit in conclusion I don't think um, you can beat it for field charge use uh, it's very flexible very easy to use and uh, my thanks go to Banggood for sending it to me for this review which I hope you found useful and informative